Hello everyone, this is your host, Captain Edward John Smith again, and welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking out the HMS Nelson, the Tier 7 British Battleship, the Free Experience Premium, which comes with the High Tier British Battleship Heel, which is always a good time. We are on the map Estuary, and we are on the southeastern spawn. This is points domination mode, so we need to secure as many caps as we can and hold that advantage. I have the high explosive loaded, I am at full speed, and we shall see how we do. This is a tier 7 battle, and we are top tier. We're moving up with this Atlanta here, and we have a Kamikaze Romeo scouting the point up ahead of us. We're going to see more of them over the course of this match, and we're going to... We're going to have some fun with this one. This was a really good match. Normally I have some trouble getting this ship working, but uh, this one really came together uh, in, a, in a very good way. So you're going to get to see all of that. You're also going to see some momentary frame skips here and there. I really can't do anything about that. I think that that is a peccadillo with the recording software. Uh, I've tried ad addressing that, but um, it doesn't seem to be working. You're seeing me do a bit of geometry here, uh, trying to get a good lead on this Miyoko, uh, piloted by a few Barius, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Anyway, I send out the first salvo of high explosive. He drops off scope. I don't know um, what's going on there, but I get one hit on him. 2,277 damage with high explosive at the start of the match. Good. I wasn't expecting to hit anything because those Japanese ships are nippy and they're very agile too. I can see the enemy Minikaze coming into the point, but my shots on him are obstructed by the rock in front of me and the enemy Cleveland is close behind. My plan was to park behind this rock and give him a bit of good news. But it seems that our Atlanta and our Kamikaze are doing a good job of putting the pressure on the enemy Minikaze as we encounter another frame skip, and I take a shot at the Cleveland who is firing armor piercing out of the smoke. Thanks to all the smoke screens set by the destroyers, I can't see anything but there's quite a bit that can see me and I can just see some armor piercing and high explosive coming out of that smoke as Fubarius in his Miyoko comes back on scope there, and I get hit for about 6,000 all up. That's fine. That's, that's fine. I'm not angry or anything. Nah, not at all. Max Marmol is now in the point, contesting it uh, from the, uh, the Minikaze that was in there, and his lone torpedo is just ahead. I've cut my speed to half because I don't want to commit too heavily into the point. I'm conscious of the fact that uh, I um, might end up exposing myself to a bit of fire. There are a number of HE spamming cruisers on this side. The Miyoko comes back on scope only briefly, but I'm suddenly detected, and that's the Minikaze in the smoke. I can see him speeding up, trying to get out of there, and I decide that it's a good idea if I contribute. Minikaze versus Kamikaze is always better with a Nelson on your side. My shells hit for 6k, and Chuck the Bear in the Nizenau finishes him off to get the first blood. That's always a good start to the match. We have also successfully capped A on the other side, and we are... Well, it's up to us to keep up the momentum here. I'm moving into position to fire on my next target, but unfortunately everyone keeps dropping in and out of detection, and the only one I can see consistently is this Atlanta, piloted by No More Nice Guy. No More Mr. Nice Guy? No, no More Nice Guy. I take a shot at him, try and lead him as best I can, unfortunately I did not estimate the range. I score a single hit on him that does not do any damage, and I'm suddenly aware that there are torpedoes coming off of my left side. You'll see them before you hear them. The important thing is to keep your eyes open because you'll always see the torpedoes that are spotted by friendlies before the torpedoes get detected by your spotters. The enemy Colorado is coming around and I decide to point myself sort of towards him because his guns can really rip through the side of my ship if he catches me at the right angle. And here we go, it looks like we're going to cap D just as the Atlanta by Michael Ors comes around the corner and I have my guns centered on him as I, uh, start varying my speed here a little bit. I'm aware that I'm detected, but I'm also aware that with me out the front, if everyone else is shooting at me, then no one else is going to be shooting at my buddies, and everyone is starting to pile it on, and I'm waiting for this guy to start committing to a turn, as I'm set on fire for the first time. And the Atlanta keeps piling it on. He must have I have HE or Demolition Expert or Running Flags, at least something, because there goes the second fire, and it's... It's getting warm in here. I take a crack at Michael Ors, who is committed to his turn, and I am rewarded a fire, an incapacitation, a high explosive citadel, and that's my first kill, which always feels good. 
I decided to load the armor piercing because yeah, I'm a battleship at close range. My armor piercing will punch through most things, and I'm close enough for my dispersion to be mitigated as no more Mr. Nice Guy, uh, no, no more Nice Guy fires at me from behind that island using the concealment to uh, keep out of harm's way. I asked Mr. Max Marmol to smoke me up in chat, and then I try to signal to him using the um, text function, not the text function, the uh, the point and command function as I'm set on fire a second time, and he lets me know that he has a short cooldown on the smoke that I should be patient, and I say, thank you, I'm on fire in three places again, they, uh, they do a good job of keeping it poured on here, as I take a shot at that Miyoko, uh, for 10k damage, never steam straight and steady in front of a battleship, it'll end badly for you. Everyone's getting in on me, even that Kirov in the middle of the channel. I contemplate taking shots at the Miyoko, but my aiming reticule is obscured by the smoke in front of me, so I figure the least I can do is just hold fire while I get into the smoke. Now, I have this ship specialized for uh, fire prevention, so the fires are going to be extinguished before my damage control cooldown. Uh, damage control comes off cooldown. I am okay with that. I was a little bit salty that my repair didn't come off sooner, but I'm on one quarter health, I can heal it back up because the Nelson has a very good recovery capacity, and my heal is almost off cooldown. And still keeping an eye out for things, here's that Cleveland poking out, and I can see my secondaries opening up on him as I run my heal, and I make sure to switch those off because I don't want to attract any undue attention to me. Some torpedoes coming in, and I figure, well, there's no point being coy about things now. I'm going to take a fish, but at least I have my repair. But I don't need it. They stopped dead shy of my ship. How about that for luck? I'm detected because I fired my guns whilst I was in smoke as Tremuter in the Atlanta takes out No More Nice Guy in the other Atlanta. And I get hit by something. And there's the Miyoko, piloted by a few Barius. I'm no longer detected, but I can only assume that he's launched torpedoes at me. So I begin relocating from the smoke. We're up three. We're up six kills to three losses. We're up three points to one, and we're up 762 to 311 points. Our victory is indeed in sight. As I move out of the smoke, bit of a frame drop there again, and I can see that our Atlanta and Minikaze are being chased. Fubarius now has eyes on me, and I can see his rear guns rotating along with the front of his ship, which is also rotating, giving me a juicy target to fire on, which I do as Tremuta in the Atlanta is taken out by the Colorado. I pop that Miyoko like a ripe grape with two citadels for the devastating strike. Tremuter's got his torps off, and here they come. And there he goes. Tremuter scores the flesh wound as ours, ours crusader in the Cleveland takes out our friendly destroyer. Max did a good job keeping me in the smoke, and I only regret that I couldn't get to him sooner. But now this Cleveland has me to answer to, and I make sure that my guns clear the island, aim for the Citadel, dial my shot in, and I'm rewarded with a 22,000 damage salvo. As Business 6 takes out Garou in the Pensacola on the other side of the map. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by a Unicum streamer who is not only a deft hand at this game, but who has also claimed a double strike against the New York. Garou is... Suitably impressed by this sterling display of skill, and begins vocalizing this, uh, this nonplessedness as I'm waiting for my HE to reload on this Cleveland. Now, I don't know why I have my secondaries turned off here. I really should have them on. I'm... And <laughs> Guru's like, aim butter? You either die a scrub or you live long enough to get called a hacker, so take that as a compliment. Now, I don't fire immediately. I'm waiting for this guy to commit to a line, because I know that if I whiff my shot here... He's going to be free to do all sorts of damage to me. But it doesn't look like he's going to turn. So I take a crack, get four hits, one shatter, and one destroyed Cleveland. Four shots on target is better than nine shots that miss. And just like that, we've cleaned up this side, but business takes out the high caliber. And it looks like the situation has resolved itself. We are 400 points ahead of them. They're capping A, which has been in our position since the beginning of this match as our Nizenau is slowly picked off by what looks like torpedoes and a combination of main gunfire. And I asked the team, it's important to communicate with the team. I asked them, do you have the situation under control in A? Guru tells me in no uncertain terms that no, they don't. The situation in A appears to have folded up. 
and I let the team know that I'm moving up to assist. My plan is to try and challenge them and take them off one by one, hopefully, but I know that business is going to play this one smart, and uh, my hope is that the Nizanao, who's currently south of me, will be able to form up with me, will be able to pool our firepower, and focus them down one by one. Business certainly isn't someone I want to trifle with, but he is someone I'd like to say hello to, so I say hello to him in the chat. It's always nice to engage in a bit of cross-team banter. I think that's one of the things I miss from old World of Tanks. I played World of Tanks before the KV was split between the, the KV-1 and the KV-2. That's how old I was, uh, you know, my history with the game. And I, I, and I enjoyed talking to the other team and just, you know, shooting the breeze once I had been one-shotted by artillery or something like that. That was, uh, that was always a good time. I can see the King George V, the Nizenau has taken shots at him, and Andy Polder in the Gaida has dropped torpedoes through Charlie. And I'm trying to get into position, I'm just keeping up the banter, I can't shoot at this guy because of the rock, and I'm in no position to, uh, you know, maneuver out of here or anything like that. I have to commit to this point because if I do, Andy in the Gaida is going to be on his own against three, I'm guessing, skilled players. Business, certainly. The, uh, the King George has already got a kill, and, uh, the Destroyer, well, I don't want to leave a Destroyer alone against the Destroyer. Andy's torpedoes find their target, and I take a crack at the King George with armor piercing. He burns his heal, but it's not enough. I get enough hits to take him out. He lands, hits enough on me to set me on fire in two places, so I have to burn my repair. I run my heal as well. I run my damage control and my heal. I use the terms interchangeably. I have to improve with that, I will admit. And here's the Farragut, Killian O'Malley, who has not scored any kills, but who I'm going to guess has been very active in capping points. Andy shots fall short, and I know that I'm not going to hit that guy at that range, but a much more appetizing target has come up on my scope. Here's the man himself, and I make sure to send him a hefty high-explosive greeting. He's got his guns pointing at... Uh, Andy and his Gaida, and I have no doubt that he'd probably be able to hit him with a decent degree of consistency as I land one round on him and set him on fire. He's no stooge, he lets it burn. He has the health to allow him to uh, tank through that. I have all of my assets on cooldown, and you can't see it here, but what I'm doing is I've got my rudder locked on half turn towards the left, and I'm waiting for business to catch notice of me as I send out another volley. Just like that, I can see his guns turning, so I cut the speed to zero, full reverse, and complete my turn in order to expose the harshest angle to him. And what could have been a very damaging salvo is instead quite manageable. However, now I have to turn my ship back in, but I don't think I'm going to be able to beat him behind the headland given the length of my reload. I'm not running adrenaline rush on this, I can only assume that he is. I can only assume that that's a 19-point captain in his possession as he lands a 3.3k salvo on the side of my ship. I make the mistake of repairing the fire, which is going to come back to me in a little bit, and my my assumption was that he was going to push through the channel and take on the Niza now, but he's more intelligent than that. We'll see him <laughs> peeking back out behind, the, uh, behind that rock. He just popped up on the minimap there for a moment. He's reversing, and... There he is again. I swing my guns around on him. Uh, just to see what he's doing. Zoom in. He's got the, uh... He took a shot at me, and now his secondaries are working me over. I run my heel in the attempt to tank through it, but I don't shoot at him. I know that that's what he wants me to do. I, instead, concentrate my attention on the Farragut here that's moving in, Kelly and O'Malley. Because I know that he's the bigger threat. I can deal with business, and we have the Nizanau moving on him as well. I have a second fire burning on me, but I need to prioritize this Farragut here who's just launched torpedoes. I'm not going to be able to avoid this. I get the best shot I'm going to take, and I let fly. Three hits, two fires, and incapacitation. I win the Confederate, and my secondaries take him out to give me the close quarters expert and the Kraken. His business's secondaries keep giving me a, a bit of a pasting. Business takes out Andy with his main guns, and he gets his own Kraken, which is, uh... A little bit <laughs> discouraging. I was rather hoping I could keep our destroyer alive, but unfortunately he's just too good of a shot. I can't do anything now because he's got me split up from the Niza now, but I'm not in much of a position to assist here. I've only got 20% of my health. Chuck just took a good bite out of business, and he sent his torpedoes in. 
But, uh, unfortunately, I'm seeing that business is able to avoid them, and business's own torpedoes have been fired, they find their mark, and Chuck and business are now engaged in a duel of the Titans from beyond my perception. Or at least I can see them, I can't land shots on them. So really, the only thing I can do now is to get into Charlie, and try and cap the point. I tell Chuck to ram business... That's what I would have done in the situation, or at least tried to. I'm not sure if he did. I could never really get a good ca camera angle on what was going on there. Uh, business has taken Chuck down to 8k health with fires and main battery. And there we go. He's taken him out. I get one salvo off at business as I get into the cap. We're up on points. We're down on caps, but I'm soon going to reverse that. But it's business. He knows what he's doing. And this is precisely the situation I wanted to avoid. Because now I'm on my own against someone who very much knows what they're doing. And Garou is suitably amazed. He remains amazed at the uh, progress of our um, of our team who've very kindly fed themselves to him. Ah, that's, that's not the case. They, we all put up a good fight, but business is quite capable. So what I'm doing here is, just my thought process, I'm trying to cap the point to accelerate the rate at which we win the match. I'm keeping my ship angled against his, or at least from where I anticipate him coming out. And I have the high explosive loaded because I can only anticipate that he's going to be angled against me as well. His spotter plane catches sight of me and he primaries his secondaries on me. Uh, well, he would have. I solo cap the point, which is always good for experience as I'm keeping my guns well trained on where I anticipate that he's going to come out from. His secondaries strike the mountaintop, and one shell just disappears in midair. And I'm waiting as the music turns off, and there he is. So, snap a shot with high explosive, send it down range, and there it goes. It connects with a 6.8k hit, and I'm beginning to minimize my profile as much as I can now. Good old Sharn Horse Dispersion comes in for me as I take out the high caliber. He sets me on fire. I burn my repair because I'm on very minimal health here. I have armor piercing loaded with... I was anticipating that he would give me more of the side of his ship, but he's doing a very good job of keeping angled. He's most likely also running Adrenaline Rush, which would bring his reload very, very comfortably down. My armor piercing finds its mark. I get a 5k hit. Now he's only 3k hit points above me as my high explosive is reloading. I've done my angling trick from before as his armor piercing salvo splatters impotently against the fronts of my turrets and the sides of my ship. I'm swinging around, but he's got his high explosive loaded and he's going to beat my reload out here as I get ready. Four seconds on the guns, 99 points in our favor. He fires, I fire, his shots connect. The points trickle in, my shots connect, and that is the end of the match. Taking a look at the results screen now, and it looks like a very handsome victory for myself and a victory for my team. There you go, you don't want to farm damage, you don't want to farm kills, you want to farm wins, and we certainly won today with a handsome payout of 388,065 silver, 6,374 ship experience, 319.3, and a slew of accolades. We have the Devastating Strike, which we scored on the Miyoko, the Confederate, which we earned by firing at the Farragut, the Fireproof for all the burning we did this match, the Close Quarters Expert, which was the kill on the Farragut, Dreadnought from the amount of damage we've taken, Kraken from our five kills, and High Caliber scored in the dying moments of that match. 132,870 damage with 52 main battery hits, four incapacitated five destroyed ships, seven fires set, four citadel hits, three defenses of point, one solo cap, and two secondary gun battery hits, which certainly came in when I needed them to. Taking a look at the team lists, I am top of my team with two and a half thousand base experience. Business, naturally, tops his. I'm sure he won the Dreadnought, and I'm sure he won... Okay, he won High Caliber, Dreadnought, uh, Kraken. I'm sure he won a number of other Acolytes, the Double Strike as well, with six ship kills, taking out more kills than the rest of his team put together, single-handedly putting paid to half of my team. The rest of the top five on my end include Andy Polda and the Guida coming in second with two kills of his own. 
Intramuter in the Atlanta, Captain something or other in the Nisenau, he must have been the last fellow alive in point A on the west side of the map, and rounding it out is Max in his kamikaze. Good to see he made the top five. Looking at the detailed report now, and looking at the breakdown, it's a pretty good spread of damage across the board. I think I got the most damage dealt on business from the amount of fires I set and from the heals that he popped. I managed to do 117,752 damage from main battery shells. I think I landed about just under a third of them, which is a shame, because I enjoy being able to say that I'm pretty accurate with my shots, so I generally shoot for 50%. Only two secondary battery hits fired, but they naturally came in precisely when I needed them to, and I scored 14,589 damage from fires. Potential damage taken in that match was 1.9 million, which is good. As a battleship, I want to be focused down. I have the means to tank through it, and hopefully I'll have a team to keep me backed up and take advantage of the fact that I'm the one getting shot at and not them. The amount of damage I received is 136,000 17, more than twice my base health, which is a testament to the utility of the high-tier British battleship heal. I hope that that never goes away. I want more of that for everyone. It's so much fun to be able to just come up and keep swinging. Taking a final look at our economic screen, and we have a final net profit of 289,005 silver after the service, ammunition, and consumables are resupplied. Of course, I ran premiums in this match. This was not my first win of the day, it was my second. I uh, took the Nelson out for a spin before, and that match was significantly less impressive than this one. It was mostly just me sitting behind an island pumping shells where no one could see me. We also came out with 6,374 uh, ship experience, which translates to 17,282 captain experience for Commodore Archibald Walsh, who will soon be sporting some new skills, assuming that I can keep up the momentum on this kind of win. Back to the summary screen, and I'll tell you what, that was a good one. Uh, definitely uh, a hair-raising finale at the end. My heart was beating, I could feel it in my teeth, and my hands were shaking so much I could hardly aim properly, but came through it in the end. Uh, business, if you ever get around to watching this, I'd be happy to square up with you one-on-one. -on -one. My Sharnhorst versus your Sharnhorst. May the best horseman win. But for the rest of you, thank you for your time together. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, and a wonderful everything. I'll catch you next time. Take care.